What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about something called adaptive thresholding which is a computer vision algorithm that allows us to take images like this one on the left here and turn them into a more readable version like this one on the right here and this is especially useful as a pre-processing step in machine learning because let's say we have a machine learning model that works with images of book pages and it performs some task for example recognizing text or counting words or performing a sentiment analysis or predicting something, classifying something, whatever, this model is most likely going to be trained on readable data and not on something like this on the left here. However, all the information that we have here on the right is actually also contained in the image on the left. If this would be a completely black image, we would not be able to extract the text like this. So this means that if we use Photoshop, GIMP, whatever, we could also turn this image into that by uh, lighting up certain areas and darkening certain other areas, but it's tedious, it has to be done manually, and it's not uh, easy to do it for 10,000 files, for example, and to do it all the time, automatically. So what we're going to do today in Python is we're going to learn how we can take something like this here and how we can turn it into this using OpenCV and Python with very few lines of code, but these lines are going to be not necessarily complicated, but we need to talk about them to understand what they're actually doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to op open up a command line or a terminal and we're going to say pip install opencv-python if you don't have it already. This is actually going to be the only library that we use and we're going to start by importing cv2 and by loading the image into the script and for this we're going to say image equals cv2 dot uh, dot imread and we're going to read page dot jpeg you can see here the resolution quite high we're going to scale this down because we don't need it uh, to be that high and we're going to say image equals cv2 dot convert color and we're going to pass image and cv2 dot color underscore bgr to gray now this basically means that we're taking the default blue green red color scheme and converting it to grayscale because we don't need to have colors in order to recognize text or in order to work with text as humans or as machine learning models. So we're going to convert it to grayscale to make things simpler. And then we're going to say image equals cv2 dot resize. And we're going to resize it to 560 and 900. Of course, you want to maintain the ratio of your image or you should maintain the ratio of your image. Um, and in my case, this is fine. All right, so then we're going to display this by saying cv2 dot show and we're going to display the image. We need a title for this as well. And then CV2 wait key zero, like that. And if we run this now, you can see that this is basically the ordinary image and now we can apply thresholding to it. Now thresholding in and of itself is not adaptive thresholding. Thresholding basically means that we define a threshold value, for example, uh, a value of lightness in this case, because we're on a grayscale, uh, we're using the grayscale. So this basically means that we have values from zero to 255, 255 being white, zero being black. And we choose a threshold value, for example, I don't know, 100. And what we do is we say every pixel that's brighter than 100, we're going to increase it to be the max value, which is 255, for example. And every value below that, we're going to decrease it to be zero, so black. So we're going to turn it into extremes to make it more readable. Um, now we can try this to see what happens. So we can start by saying underscore because this is a return value that we're not going to need. Underscore and result is going to be cv2 dot threshold. And we're going to apply this onto the image and now we can pass three parameters besides the image. The first one is the, is the threshold value, for example, 100 that we talked about. The max value is the next one, which is the maximum value that we're going to change to if we are above 100. Now we can do this, uh, we, we can choose this to be white. So this would increase every pixel above 100 to be white. We can also change this to 200, which is a light gray. So we can play around with this later on. And then as the last thing, we choose the actual algorithm, the actual way of doing the thresholding. And for this, we have these different things. Let me just see if I'm not blocking anything. No, you should be able to read that. 
This is basically binary thresholding up here. Now, I know this is math or this looks mathematical. Don't be confused. It's actually not that difficult. Basically, we're just saying that the result pixel, the resulting pixel at the coordinates X and Y will be the max value provided. So in this case, this would be 255. If the source pixel is larger than the threshold, this is exactly what I just told you and zero otherwise. So the max value, if we pass the threshold and zero, if not. Uh, binary inverse is actually the other way around. So if we are above the threshold, we're going to make this being zero and otherwise we're going to go to the max value. Then we have truncate here, which is basically the threshold if the source is larger than the threshold. So we don't go above the threshold and otherwise it's going to say, uh, stay the same. And uh, then we have two zero, which is basically the source pixel if it's above the threshold and otherwise we're going to zero. And we have the inverse of that as well. So we're going to use binary for now. We're going to say cv2 dot thresh underscore binary. And this is actually what we have then. Now I can go ahead and say cv2 im show result results, for example, and then cv2 wait key zero, like that. <clears throat> and you're going to see that in this case, we get uh, we get a completely black thing because 100 is probably too high of a value to work with. So let's go with 20 to see what happens there. And in this case, you can see that it works to some degree, but it's not exactly what we want. You can see that uh, the lighter pixels of the image are turned to be completely white, whereas the, uh, the darker pixels are still black. And as you can see here, we can see some more readable text, which is way better than the original image. Maybe we should um, also show this original. This is going to be the image. Uh, you can see that this is definitely partly more readable than the left one. But still we have this completely black thing here in the middle in the diagonal, uh, because we have a binary thresholding. And the problem with simple thresholding, if it's not adaptive, is that we need different lightness levels or different thresholds for different areas. So if you look at this image here, on the upper right and on the lower left, we have lighter areas. So the threshold here can be a little bit higher. Whereas in the middle here, we have uh, a very dark, dark line, you could say a very dark diagonal. So here we would need lower thresholds to brighten up these areas. And of course, with the basic thresholding, we just provide a global threshold and a global max value and an algorithm, this is not enough to accomplish that. Now, before we go on with adaptive thresholding, let me just show you that we can also change the max value to 220, for example, and then it's not going to be white, but it's going to be like gray, as you can see here. Um, and we can also change, let me just change this back to white. We can also change this to binary in, for example. So you can play around a little bit with the individual things. We can also change this to truncate. And you can see the different results here. So truncate doesn't really make a lot of sense in this case. Uh, so we're going to mainly work with the binary threshold because that promises the best results. But we're going to now use adaptive thresholding. Now, as I just mentioned, it makes sense to use different threshold values for the individual areas of an image based on their darkness or brightness. And this is exactly what adaptive thresholding does. It chooses an adaptive method to determine the threshold based on its surroundings. And if we want to create an adaptive threshold, if we want to use an adaptive threshold, we can say something like adaptive, adaptive underscore result equals CV2 dot adaptive threshold. This is the function and it takes a bunch of different parameters. So the first one is the image itself. And the second one is the max value because the max value remains a global value. We don't want to have a different max value for individual areas. We still want to have the same max value everywhere. And this is going to be white. So 255. And the next thing is the adaptive method. This method determines how we choose the threshold based on the surroundings. So we have two choices here. We have the mean underscore C and we have the Gaussian C. And I'm not going to go into too much mathematical details here. But the basic idea is that the mean adaptive method basically says that the threshold of a certain area of a certain block is going to be the mean of all the pixels. And the Gaussian 
the Gaussian method basically uses the so-called Gaussian window. So we have a weighted sum of the individual pixels. It's a little bit more complicated, but in my opinion, a little bit better suited for what we're going to do here. So CV2 dot, and we're going to choose, uh, what was it? Adaptive, adaptive underscore thresh underscore Gaussian C. Now let me start a new line here. Uh, then we choose a threshold type and the threshold type is basically what we chose up here. So what we're going to do is we're still going to use binary thresholding. So we're still going to have the same threshold type, but we're going to apply it adaptively. So this is the method that applies the type and the type is still going to be CV2 dot thresh binary, which is what we saw in the mathematical formulas. Then we choose a block size and this has to be odd because we got to have an odd amount of pixels to make a decision because with even we could have 50 50 and then of course we cannot make a decision. So a value that works here very well is 41. This basically says how many pixels am I going to look at to determine the threshold value. And of course, the smaller this number is the more locally the threshold is going to be chosen, uh, the more noise you will have probably and the higher this number is the more global the threshold will be chosen. And the last thing is uh, the C, which is basically just a constant that we subtract uh, to reduce noise. So for this uh, image, five works quite well. And this is basically how we use adaptive thresholding. So now all we need to do is we need to copy that and adaptive and change this here to adaptive result. And then we can run this and see the adaptive result. There you go. So the difference you can see is this is the original image. This is thresholding with a global threshold value. So it applies well here, doesn't work so well here. And um, here, of course, we have the adaptive thresholding. So for these areas on the upper right uh, side, we have a certain threshold value. And here we have a certain threshold value. But then we also have one here, which is chosen well, so we can read the whole text. Now, of course, if you want, you can play around with the different parameters, you can increase the block size to be, for example, 101, just keep in mind, it has to be odd, not even. And 101 is going to make it more global. Uh, now, in this case, it doesn't really change too much about the result. Now, of course, I can go ahead and say, okay, it's going to be five. So we're going to look at five pixels to determine the threshold. And then we're going to see that uh, it doesn't work so well, it looks a little bit too thin. Uh, and of course, I can change this to, I don't know, 205, maybe we're going to see something then. But of course, if I increase this too much, it's going to be too global again. So I don't know if I choose something like 707. I don't even know if I have that many pixels. Uh, but then of course, you can see again that we have some problems here. So I think that for this case, 41 is quite a good value. We're going to see more difference when we change uh, the constant that we subtract. So if we change this to one, for example, we're going to see that we have a lot of noise, we can still read the text, but it has a lot of noise, which is not good for machine learning models. And if I, I don't know if we can change this to zero, to be honest. Yeah, we can. So we have a lot of noise here. Uh, it becomes very hard to read actually. And if I change this to a large number, so 40, for example, then it's going to reduce the noise a lot, but it's going to reduce it too much. So it's going to perceive the text as noise as well. So let's go with something like 20, maybe to see what an extreme looks like. Uh, yeah, this is, for example, what happens if you do it too much. Maybe 10 is something that is still going to be readable. But yeah, you can see what happens. Basically, it reduces noise, but sometimes it reduces it too much. So it perceives the text as noise. Here again, I think five is a good value that works quite well. And yeah, that is how you take poorly lit book pages and turn them into readable versions in Python using OpenCV and adaptive thresholding. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.